B. What's up, man? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Take two. All right. <laughs> um, okay, so talk about how we were talking that switch. Obviously, you need yeah. that switch to – because cause I feel like for you, this is a really great topic, too, because off the court, I mean, people could just feel in this convo how genuine you are, how spiritual, you know, you're all yeah. about God, about spreading, you know, the good word. And yeah. then you come on the court and you're just this animal who talks smack to his teammate, Taylor. So, yeah. you know, yeah, talk I about mean, that. I'm um, having that switch, man. It's, it, it just comes to where like, yo, like. I need to turn the switch on because it's the only way I know that I'm going to produce. If I'm being the nice guy, uh, I'm not going to be as successful. You know, you know, I'm not going to take it as hard or I'm not going to take it as, uh, I'm not going to go a hundred percent because being a nice guy, nice guys finish last, yeah. you know, it's proven fact with everything. So it's like, I got to go get it. I want people to fear me when somebody fears you, it makes the game easier for you and anything you do. Yeah. You know, and it's just that respect factor. And I knew like, yo, if I if I don't play aggressive and if I'm not mean on the court, but at the same time being controlled with it, I know I get the best results. And if I don't eat, you know, my family don't eat. I don't yeah. eat. So in, in so all I, these in all these countries, like you're you're playing in Mongolia or like let's say you're not playing in a in a league that you love like Thailand or let's say you're you're just somewhere and it's just a tough uh, you know, just a tough place for you to play. Uh, maybe it's cold. Maybe, you know, you just have all these factors. Injuries sometimes. You're not getting paid on time. How do you pull that out of you? Like, where does that come from for DeCorey? Man, for me, that's when God, that's when I told you you need God. <laughs> Number one, I'm in the word, bro. And uh, it's the spirit. And it's people who are not with the word or who don't believe, it's going to be hard for them to, like, understand me. But... I'm telling you, if you go to the source and you read and you're in the word and you pray, if you meditate, if you manifest, like you'll see stuff, you'll see your days more calm. You'll see stuff working for you instead of against you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's just going to that source. It, you can't do this alone, man. And it's like when when you're trying to do stuff by yourself, man, it, this world is tough, bro. It's hard. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let me ask you, because there's a couple guys on here. Uh, some really great players that I see watching right now, but they come from smaller schools like NAIs, um, you know, and they're not really sure what to do. Maybe they don't have the connection. So what's your advice? You know, speak to them right now. So like my advice to guys who don't have the connections and they don't know what to do is one, stay working, stay in the gym. But two, remember, it ain't all about just working hard in the gym. A lot of it is networking and that's with calling, like getting online, going on these these college websites, looking up emails, you know, and sending and sending out your highlight tape from YouTube. No, because a lot of the phone all day. Yeah, a few of these guys are trying to transition into the pro game. Yeah. So like if they they, they just finished school this year. College like, going to pro. Mm -hmm. Going yeah, trying so, to go pro. Yeah, if you're trying to go pro, yeah, it's just repeating that process, repeating the process. Like you gotta have. A brand for one, create yourself a brand. Like, who are you? Like, we got Statham Academy. We know what you do. We know what you're about. We got skills over politics. We got DeCorey Jones, Deco Spalding. Everybody knows what I'm about. What are you about? You got to find out your own identity. When you have a brand and when you have a foundation, then you can present this brand to the owners. Mm -hmm. Tell them why. Hey, why are you so special? Why should I choose you over this brand? Why should I choose you over this player? You got to have something special that sticks out. So, yeah, you need a package. You need one, highlight tape. Two, contacts and connections. Yep, there goes the Eurobasket profile right there. Look at all those countries, man. Yeah, have everything organized. Have your YouTube page organized. Have all your paperwork organized. You know, it's just getting on the phones, man. You got to get on the phones. The name of the game is network. Your network is your net worth. Definitely. And that's the truth. Definitely. Hey, so let's, let's, uh, let's go through some, like, quicker questions. Um, not as in-depth, just, like, quick answers, okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, where is your favorite place to play? Maldives. <laughs> More than Thailand? Yeah. <laughs> man, okay. What was, the most, what was the most competitive league you played in? 
Argentina. Argentina, why? Physicality. Physicality, bro. How good are those locals? All the locals can hoop like Americans. That was my first time getting dunked on, like, from a local. Like, mm -hmm. it was, yeah, they can hoop out there. Skills and physicality. Where's the best food uh, you've had? Spain. Spain? Spain. Okay. Best food, bro. The pasta from the bread, like, everything, bro. The fruit was fresh. Spain has the best food. Definitely. Uh, it better than Galaxy Mall? Yo, chill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are, like, some things that you never thought you'd try that you tried overseas? Whether it's, like, food, uh, riding a motorbike, whatever. Yep, riding a motorbike. I never thought I'd ride a motorbike in my life, bro. Like, I, I was so against that, but I, I was forced to do it, riding a motorbike. Um, eating a foreign animal, you know, where it was like a, uh, like a what? fish caught, like, bro, going fishing, caught right out of the water, and just mm -hmm. putting, it on, putting it on the grill, eating it right on the spot, or eating, eating a fish head, or eating frog, or something, like, just eating exotic stuff, stuff yeah. I never tried. How long, no, did it take you to, how long did it take you to open up to stuff like that? Because for me, like, my first two years overseas, I, I wouldn't try anything. Like, but now yeah. that I have, it yeah. just opened my mind to so much. Bro, it, 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 took me about, it took me about three or four years, man, when I, <laughs> I started learning about, like, okay, if you adjust to the culture, it's not all that bad. Like, yeah, okay. Hey, hey I don't know if you're reading any of these comments, but shout out to Paul. He said he has both these shirts on, or he has both these shirts and then one of your boys, Big Hollow, said, Big he Hollow, he cut his own hair, y'all, he cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, you wild, dog. That's hey, funny, man. Big Hollow, man. Another dude that grind, man. Definitely. I seen him in Armenia, can jump out the gym, and he's one of them guys who touched the D-League, and, man, dude still ain't taking a chance on him. That's yeah. just how hard the game is, bro. So many great players, so many great players. Uh, would you jump with him if, if you're under the rim and he's going to dunk? No, I'm not jumping with him, bro. Okay. Like, he, yo, he, you know, all guys with dreads have athletic ability. All guys oh, with yeah, dreads. Uh, <laughs> off the top, <laughs> you see the dreads, you know, man. Yeah. Um, Dico, how long are you going to be at Shooting Stars? Uh, so I plan on working with this company for the rest, you know, until I say I'm done. Like, this is like, you know, for me, a family. Like, I feel like I can come back to Brunei anytime I want mm -hmm. and, and work for them. And, you know, we help each other. They're a platform for me. So, yeah, actually, I'm going to say lifetime contract, baby. <laughs> um, yeah. Let me, let me ask you, because a, a lot of guys on here are transitioning to pro. They are pros. Um, you know, just give your experience on tournaments in China and tournaments in the Philippines. Like those yeah. outside tournaments, like Legal of Buzz. Yeah. yeah. Wild, wild ball. ball. So the outside tournaments Taylor's talking about is the wild ball. And, you know, you got owners that, you know, they call you up. You know, you got your flights, you got your food paid for, but you play four or five games a day. And you don't know who you're playing against. So you're on the street going from neighborhood to neighborhood, earning three to 500 bucks per game, mm -hmm. you know, and they want you to entertain. You're out there for entertainment and you're out there to win. And the money's just super quick. There's no practices. There's no trainings. There, it's just you and your skills and putting on a show and making sure you win for your owner. Definitely. So how important is it to, uh, for you? I mean, are, you know, how fun is it for you to play in those in between seasons? Because I used to love that, man. I would, I would be sneaking over there trying to do it like when I was playing 3x3 and I was like signed and I was playing representing the Philippines. I would, they were getting mad because I would always like go to these tournaments. But, dude, it's like so much money if you're winning. Like, a lot of guys are transitioning from, like, even playing, you know, in these long leagues because it wear and tear on your body, where you can go to these quick money tournaments or these wild ball and make what you made in a whole season in a few weeks. Yeah. Like, yo, you got a guy making 2K a month where you got guys playing 500 a game. Mm-hmm. You know, six, seven games, you already made more than I made in a month. In three days. Yeah. So, yeah, the wild ball had picked up like crazy, man, until this coronavirus hit. Everybody was on it. But it's really good to play in between as well when there's, no, when there's no work. You can just hit these tournaments. Definitely, definitely, man. So what's next for Deco Spalding? 
So for me, man, uh, so with the coronavirus that's going on and the market of basketball is going to take a really huge hit because it's, it's highly dependent on sponsorships and stuff like that. Like, yo, like schools are never going to go anywhere. Kids are never going to go anywhere. That's that's like guaranteed income. So I'm, I'm looking into like uh, just working with this academy and also teaching. I'm I'll actually I'm going back to school. I'm thinking I'm going I am going to go back to school. I'm going to get my teaching degree. Oh, wow. So I can be like a teacher in a school. It's just something like life after basketball. And this coronavirus has showed me that like, yo, once this basketball stuff stops, there ain't no more money coming in. Mm -hmm. I can't even coach kids right now because of, you know, what's happened. But I know one thing, teaching will always be there. Yeah, definitely. So I plan on going back to school, man. So how, is, how important is it for guys to also focus on life after basketball? Oh, it's really important. A lot of guys are just going with the motions, just hooping. And then when they're done with basketball, they don't know what to do. They don't have no 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 plan B. Like for me, I've I've networked and I've connected to people to where like, yeah, when I'm done with basketball, I'm gonna still be able to make money from basketball just in a different way. Not playing, but coaching kids or going and speak at seminars, you know, or doing commercials, like, you know, teaching drills. Like yeah. you got to be versatile. You you gotta be your brand. You just can't put the ball in the hoop. Definitely, definitely, man. Well, I appreciate your time so much, bro. Um, if you got anything else you want to say to players out there listening, uh, now is the time. Yeah, I mean, shout out to you, man. Statham Academy, bro. What you're doing for the, the culture is really good. Skills over politics as well. And uh, this is good for the culture, man, because it's a lot of these professional NBA players. They're doing their thing, but it's at their level. And we really can't relate. So it's good that we have a platform like yourself you know, giving players like for our our level, you know, like people that can relate to our stories and our struggles and um, are actually living what we're doing. So shout out to you. And then also like shout out to all the hoopers that's grinding, man. Stay grinding, stay working, keep the faith. Um, it's Bro, like I'm a living testimony. Like six points per game. Now like, yo, I, I'm my own brand. Like I, I'm not hurting. Yeah. So last question. Uh how much does this picture right here put fear in your heart? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very scared. Hey, you're my idol. <laughs> no, nah, shut up, man. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> it took me so long. I tried to pull up the fifty seven points, but my face is like covering it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, but hey man, I appreciate you so much. Continue to do what you do. Uh just stay healthy out there in Brunei, man. Don't let Sam drive you too crazy. Yeah, Samuel John, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah. So hopefully we can sit down and do something like this again, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, that. bro. Hey, hey, I appreciate you too, man. Hey, God bless, bro. And keep the culture going, man. For the coach, keep it Definitely, going. bro. All right. Talk to you soon. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this will be my last one for the week. We'll start. Oh, uh, Sunday, we'll probably redo Mario Wusong for you guys who didn't see. There's probably like 50 Indonesian fans who hit me up about it. Um, so we're just going to redo it for everybody. He has so much great things to say. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, you know where to DM me. Other than that, stay healthy, guys.